Canada's biggest heist wasn't gold. It was maple syrup. All right, picture this. A heist, but it's not some glitzy affair for diamonds or stacks of cash. Nope. This blockbuster crime happened in Canada. So naturally, we're talking about maple syrup. You heard right, maple syrup. And we're not talking about a few bottles to drizzle on pancakes here and there. We're talking over 3,000 tons of syrup stolen in what has been called the Great Canadian Maple Syrup Heist. On the street, that's worth a jaw-dropping $18 million. So, who pulled off this sweet, sticky job? <laughs> and why maple syrup? Well, buckle up. Because this story is more surprising than a Mountie getting his ride yanked out of a snowbank by a moose. Who pulled off the sweetest crime? Our story starts with an unlikely mastermind. Richard Vallier, a maple syrup distributor from Quebec with a taste for the finer things. Apparently he's some kind of maple syrup sommelier, but he didn't pull off this heist alone. This sticky caper also involved Etienne Saint-Pierre, another distributor, and a few other accomplices. Together, they would make what might be one of the most Canadian heist crews that was ever assembled. They saw an opportunity to make a quick buck, or rather, a few million bucks, off the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, sometimes referred to as the Syrup Cartel. You see, in Quebec, they take their maple syrup very seriously, and the aforementioned Federation controls prices and distribution of the sticky stuff with an iron spatula. So naturally, it was a tempting target for anyone bold enough to dip their fingers into the syrup pot. In other places, thieves might go for gold or high-value art. But in Canada, where maple syrup flows like a national elixir, syrup was the perfect prize. The Big Spill. How the heist was discovered. The heist went undiscovered for nearly a year. How? Because the perpetrators had an inside connection and a warehouse full of syrup barrels that didn't get daily inspections. But in July 2012, the plan began to fall apart like a stale waffle. A Federation inspector was doing routine checks when he noticed something strange. He went to move a barrel and nearly threw his back out because it weighed next to nothing. Imagine the horror of opening a syrup barrel, expecting that rich amber gold, only to find nothing. No syrup. Some of the barrels had even been filled with water as a decoy, while others were simply empty. So, here's this inspector, probably hoping someone's got to be pulling my leg here. This is like a Mountie opening a box of donuts and finding salad. Such a cruel joke. This shocking discovery led to an investigation, and it soon became clear thieves had been siphoning syrup over months right under the Federation's nose. Syrup sleuthing. How they did it. Here's how these maple rustlers pulled it off. They actually rented a space in the storage warehouse owned by the Federation where they kept a huge cache of maple. These thieves would then siphon syrup out of the barrels and replace the weight with water, or just leave them empty. Then, they would hit the road, transporting their ill-gotten booty in tanker trucks across the border to distributors in the United States, who then resold it at full price. In total, they made off with around 9,571 barrels of syrup by siphoning and then blending them with legitimate shipments to cover their tracks. It was the slowest heist in history. A little like taking a teaspoon at a time from a honey jar. But when your jar contains thousands of gallons, it eventually adds up. 
This patient, methodical heist went on for nearly a year before our erstwhile syrup inspector found the first empty barrel. But once they realized the loss, the authorities had to act fast to trace those shipments, and they discovered those hosers who were messing with the flow. Why steal maple syrup? So why maple syrup, of all things? Well, in Canada, maple syrup is more than just a breakfast condiment. It's a multi-million dollar industry, especially in Quebec, which produces about 72% of the world's syrup. The Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers treats this syrup like, like liquid gold, stabilizing the prices and regulating the supply. Now, here's where it gets even sweeter. Canada has what's called the Canadian Strategic Maple Syrup Reserve. Yes, that's right. There is a government-approved stash of syrup ready to cover shortages or bad harvest to keep the market from crashing. Think of it like the U.S. Strategic Oil Reserves, but uh, much tastier. For thieves, that precious syrup reserve was like an unattended vault of maple gold. If they could just skim a bit off the top and sell it on the black market, they'd make a fortune. And that's exactly what Valliers and his crew were counting on. You have to hand it to him. Only in Canada could a national treasure be sticky, sweet, taste good on pancakes, and come with a massive backup reserve. So they didn't just see syrup. They saw opportunity. An entire industry they could tap into, pun intended, without too much suspicion. Sweet justice. But as sticky as their scheme was, they eventually got caught. Authorities traced the stolen syrup, and in 2017, Richard Valliers and several others were convicted. Valliers, as the ringleader, was ordered to pay back a whopping 9.4 million in restitution. That's a whole lot of syrup money. As for the stolen syrup, some of it was recovered, but not all. But the case left a mark on Canada's maple syrup industry, tightening security and raising a question no one thought to ask before. Just who would steal maple syrup? And that's the tale of Canada's greatest and stickiest heist. Next time you're drizzling that golden syrup on waffles, just think, someone, somewhere, went to prison for that sweetness. Somewhere in this sweet story is an ounce or two, or maybe more, of not only syrup, but wisdom. But let's just focus on this one. So, here's an ounce. Powerful ideas come in all shapes and sizes. They can flash out of the blue or come from struggle and time. But when they do come, even if it's a million dollar idea, Make sure it's one that won't put you in prison. <laughs> and that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little story about Canadian syrup. And if you did, give us a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. All of that kind of activity will help us to rise in the ratings so that we can get ourselves out there and other people can see us too. And we'd appreciate that kind of help. Thanks.